You're listening to audio from Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.ph slash give. Anyway, I want us to pray right now as we get into God's word. Now let's, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for this evening, Lord. And as we have been saying, it's true, Lord God, that we might be separated by distance because of uh, the ECQ, the lockdown that uh, we are having, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, because though we are distant, we are never disconnected. We thank you, Lord God, that it is your spirit that is able to connect our hearts together but also we thank you, Lord God, for uh, uh, social media platforms like this, the softwares like this that we are using, that somehow we're still able to connect to one another. And Lord, so this afternoon, this evening, I pray, Lord God, that you will just uh, uh, speak your word to every one of us. I pray, Lord God, that you help us better understand the value and the importance of faith in the midst of the crisis that we are facing as a nation or even as in the whole world. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as I was saying you know, uh, in, in my prayer, you know, what I would like to be sharing to you this evening, I have entitled it, you know, let me just share my uh, screen to you. Okay, so... The title of the message is Faith in the Midst of Crisis. Okay? Faith in the Midst of Crisis. And uh, I actually put a subtitle there. No? The just or the just shall live by faith. Or maybe in some translations, the righteous shall live by faith. If you are familiar with your Bible, no, maybe that last line sounds familiar. The just shall live by faith. It is actually taken from Romans chapter 1, no? Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Okay? And uh, if you are familiar with history, okay, that was actually the battle cry of the Reformation. I'd like to, I'd like to read something to you as, a, as an introduction. Ano? Uh, in the year... No, actually, in the year 1517, October 31, 1517, Christendom was going through a period of great crisis. No, there was such a prevalence of corrupt practices within the church. And at that time, Martin Luther, who was a German priest, no, nailed a document that he wrote okay, protesting... Uh, protesting you know, against uh, the Catholic Church's corrupt practices of selling indulgences to absolve sin. Okay? This is his famous 95 Thesis, which propounded two central beliefs, you know, that the Bible is the central religious authority and that humans may reach salvation only by their faith and not by their deeds. And those, you know, that, that event shook the Christian world to its core and was, was to spark what we now know in history as the Great Protestant Reformation. And as I mentioned a while ago, the verse that became the battle cry of the Reformation was you know, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Let's, uh, I want us to uh, go to that verse right now. Okay. Romans chapter 1, verse, uh, man. Okay, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, sabi po dyan, For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous or the just shall live by faith. No, the righteous or the just shall live by faith. No, going back to my title a while ago, sabi ko the title of this message is no, Faith in the Midst of Crisis. No, 
in, in, during that time in the life of Martin Luther, you know, there was a great crisis that was, was going on in the world, particularly in the Christian world. And uh, there was a lot of corrupt practices that was going on. And, and that led to Martin Luther you know, nailing his 95 Theses, which somehow brought a shaking to Christendom. In the same way, Tayo, we are going through, you know, there's no question, we are going through a crisis. You know? uh, at the beginning of this crisis, you know, the World Health Organization uh, called it you know, a global pandemic. You know, there is no question that uh, uh, this is actually a, uh, ano, a global uh, crisis. You know? uh, to, to my staff, uh, I'm, I'm done with the title, okay na? Uh, show my face, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, as as I was saying, you know, we are we are in the midst of a a global pandemic. That is what this crisis is called. So initially, it was just only parang yun na, a health crisis. Bakit health crisis? It is our health, you no, know, that is actually at risk. You know, this this COVID nineteen disease, this virus is highly infectious. But not only is it infectious. You know, it can actually lead to death. And so you know, that is why uh, our, the governments of the world put us into an ECQ, a lockdown, as some, some governments may have used that term. Okay? But now we realize from just being a health crisis, it is not only a health crisis now, but also an economic crisis. Literally, world governments you know, are experiencing recession, Okay, uh, businesses are 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 literally experiencing some some businesses have already declared bankruptcy. A lot of people are being laid off. No, yung iba they had to take a pay cut. Yung iba naman talaga yung na some are from the very very beginning of this crisis. Merong mga iba that they have experienced no work and no pay. So there is no question that what you and I are experiencing is a crisis. And when you talk about a crisis, what does a crisis do? A crisis you know, somehow shakes us. Uh, I was reminded of this verse you know, in, uh, uh, let me share this, this verse to you in Hebrews. Okay? Uh, Hebrews Chapter 12, verses 26 to 29, reading from the New Living Translation. Sabi dito, When God spoke from Mount Sinai, His voice shook the earth. But now, He makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that creation will be shaken and removed so that only the unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and, uh, thankful and please God by worshiping Him with holy fear and awe, for our God is a devouring fire. I believe that this verse you know, is very relevant to what we are experiencing right now. There's something that the Lord is saying to us here. You know, he's talking about the time during... Uh, during when Moses and the nation of Israel was in the wilderness, right after they just, they just came out of Egypt. No? Sabi do, during that time, no, God spoke from Mount Sinai. Remember, Moses and the nation of Israel, they were camped in the wilderness of Sinai. And when God spoke there, sabi do, something happened. His voice literally shook the mountain. It shook the earth. No? And when you talk about shaking, ano ba sa Tagalog yung shaking? It, it means... Uh, it, you know, it, it, it is translated as pagyanig. Okay? In other words, gumalaw yung lupa. No, actually, was it, was it just yesterday or today, early this morning? I, I, maybe it was yesterday no, that we just experienced an earthquake no, in, uh, I think, Aurora province. No? Although, although hindi naman ganun katindi yung intensity, but still, you need to understand, no? when, when every time that there is an earthquake, you cannot help but... Uh, be anxious, or you can even be fearful, no? Because of the reality that what, no? Okay? That if if the earthquake becomes really strong, yung yung shaking, yung pagyane really intensifies, no? You are you are you begin to think about the structure of the building that you're standing on. 
No, one of the things that earthquake reveals is that uh, yun nga eh, yung mga pagyanig, it reveals the strength or the structure, you know, the strength of the structure of our buildings or our houses. Pag hindi ganun katiba yung pundasyon o hindi ganun katiba yung structure, what happens? No? The, the shaking, no, yung pagyanig reveals how weak a building or a structure is. That's why may mga ilang gusali no, o mga ilang bahay na kahit hindi naman ganun kalakas yung shaking na nangyayari, no, the whole structure, the whole house collapses. Okay? Now, one thing I understand from this verse that it is God who actually does the shakings that happen in our lives. No? Sabi niya dito, in, in fact, he even says here, once again, okay, once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. No? Okay? Once again, I will shake, no, I will not only shake the earth, but the heavens also. Apparently, God has a purpose you know, for the shakings that uh, He allows or He does in our lives. May saisay, may purpose pala yung pagyanig. At anong purpose niyan? If you look back at the verse, sabi doon, so that the things that can be shaken will be removed. And the things that are unshakable okay, will remain. Okay? And I, I have a question for you. So far, how are you doing in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this shaking that is going on in our world? In the shaking, not only our economy, not only the world's governments and the world's leaders, it is personally shaking our family, our personal lives. And I, how are you holding, holding on? How, do, how are you holding up in the midst of this shaking in the midst nito mga pagyanig na to no nananatili ka ba kumakapit ka pa rin ba matibay ka pa rin ba are you able to stand are you able to remain no or or is it possible that some of us are falling apart okay nakita ko rin dito that yun nga there are things that God wants to remove in our lives no so that you know the things that remain the things that are unshakable will remain and the things that are no that are not necessary will be removed in other words na realize ko may mga bagay na sadyang hindi tatagal eh okay no in in other words no eh, there are things even good things that are not forever okay sabi nga nila may mga bagay na sadyang bagamat maganda maaring wala pa rin itong forever no <laughs> just a couple of days ago uh, the our senate had its you know, they went back to their usual senate sessions and senate hearing and if if you were watching some of those sessions no me and my wife no si Shaleen, we were watching it and we were surprised to see some of the senators like oh my goodness have you if if you notice for example si Migs Subiri no grabe oh no his all his hair was white no yung kanyang uh, bigote yung kanyang balbas was also white and you realize like wow these guys are actually old no nagpa, napapabata lang ng pagkukulay ng buhok si, si senator Tito Soto like oh my lolo na pala talaga like you can see all the white hair sticking out kasi nga they're not able to go to the to the parlor or to have their treatments to the salon or to the barber and and it shows us that what there are just things that are not that will not really last no yung youthfulness natin yung kabataan natin no let's face it no matter how much we try to no to preserve that no no matter how much we how we wish that our youthfulness no will remain forever it's not going to last no which actually reminds me there's this other verse that I would like to uh, share with you in a uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. If you have your Bibles with you, you can actually turn there with me. But also, uh, okay, thank you for uh, putting that up. I was about to do that. <laughs> okay, I, uh, my, my staff is helping me. No? So, sabi dito, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Until then, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, 
and love. Yet love surpasses them all. No? What is Paul trying to say here? If you're familiar with this, with this chapter that Paul writes to the Corinthian church, this is the famous love chapter. Okay? And, uh, and, and uh, what, 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 what was Paul basically discussing in this? Uh, no? Wait. Okay. okay. So uh, what, what is Paul basically discussing in this? Uh, there, there was a message for me. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. So what was, what was basically Paul saying in this, uh, no, in this, uh, in this verse? No? So he was basically discussing uh, the love chapter. And in fact, he started off with this. Sabi niya, uh, even if I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels, and yet I don't have love, Okay. Sabi niya, I am but a clanging symbol. Even if I give my body to be sacrificed, if I don't have love, I am nothing. And then of course, he proceeds on to talk about love. Sabi niya, love is patient and love is kind. Love is not jealous. It's not proud. It's not arrogant. No? And then as, as, he, as he continues his discourse about love, Sabi, sinabi niya doon na okay, tongues will eventually stop. Prophecies. And you know, can you imagine how beautiful prophecies are? No, prophecies will cease. In fact, even sabi niya, no, uh, the gaining of knowledge will come to an end. And, and when you think about knowledge, so parang there's a never-ending uh, increase of, of knowledge. No? But... Uh, but sabi ni Paul, no? sabi ni Paul that even those things that are really good, like tongues, prophecy, knowledge, walang forever itong mga bagay na to. Okay? These things are not forever. Okay? But then, what does the verse say? The verse says in 1 Corinthians 13, sabi dyan, these three things remain. So there will be things that will be shaken. There will be things that will not last. There are things that we have to accept are not forever. And if there's one thing that COVID-19 has exposed to us, is you know, a lot of people has been holding on so much to, uh, to what's this? Uh, some of the things that they think it's gonna preserve their lives, like for example, money. But then now you see the futility of wealth. No, when, when you realize that even if you're the richest person in the world, even if you have lots of money, and all of a sudden you nagkaroon ka ng, ng COVID-19 na sakit, no? uh, how I wish that your money is able to cure you, but even if you have money, okay, there is, no, and you're willing to buy the cure, the thing is, there is no cure. There is no vaccine. Okay? And, and that shows us no, the futility of the things that we hold on to. Okay? Uh, just, I think about two, two weeks ago, no, I, uh, I, uh, I read an article about how one billionaire who was in the oil business declared bankruptcy of his company. Can you imagine? No, this is a, a, a billionaire. Okay? As a multi-million dollar company, okay? And now he has to declare bankruptcy because of what? You know, the oil prices has gone not just to zero. There was, I think, a couple of weeks ago, the oil prices went below zero. It, it was negative. Ano nangyari yun? Kasi nga, there's an overproduction of oil. Tuloy-tuloy yung production ng langis. And yet, no one is consuming oil. Kasi hinto lahat eh. No? Walang... Walang lumilipad, walang, uh, walang naglalayag na barko, walang, not even tricycles were allowed no, to operate. Thus, there was no consumption. Okay? And it just shows how you know, these things that before we used to treasure in the world are about nothing. They're meaningless. They're, they're futile. Okay? It, 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 it amounts to nothing. But if there are three things that remain, sabi ni Paul, faith, hope, love. Well, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a series on this. No? The unshakable things in the kingdom of God. Okay? One is faith, one is hope, and one is definitely love. But for tonight, 
I would just simply like for us to focus on faith. No? Uh, going back to the verse a while ago in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, sinabi doon, di ba, the just shall live by faith. Okay? What does this mean? Why, why is this verse relevant for us right now? The just or the righteous shall live by faith. Okay? A couple of prayer meetings ago, you know, God gave me this word and I realized that if you and me are to, to triumph or to, you know, what's the term? To live through this crisis. The only way, I believe that the only way that we can live through this crisis is really through faith. Okay? In the same way that Martin Luther and the reformists, no, they, were in, they were able to live through that crisis in Christianity by understanding the power, yung kapangyarihan at yung, yung kahalagahan ng pananampalataya ng faith. No? In the same way, I believe that if we, if you and me are to not just survive, not just to live through this pandemic, but even no, come out of this thing triumphantly, it is true faith. The just, no? let me rephrase the word, the just, the righteous, shall not only live, but triumph through faith. We will, no, we will be victorious through faith. Okay. What, is, what is faith? Okay. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, you know, faith is defined as this. I believe it in the NIV version. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And this is what the ancients were commended for. This is This is quite an interesting verse. Or, no? In fact, the author of Hebrews, in a way, uses kind of a contradiction or play of words. Why? Look at how he defines faith. Sabi niya, yung faith daw, yung pananampalataya daw, sometimes when we think about faith, we limit it in terms of what we believe. Hindi, paniniwala mo yan, paniniwala ko to. But the Bible has a distinct definition of what real faith is. It is not just a belief in a certain doctrine. It is not just a belief in a certain way of life. Okay? The Bible clearly defines faith this way. Sabi niya, it is being sure of what we hope for. Okay? How is that even possible? How can you be sure of something na inaasahan mo pa lang eh? Is that amazing? Paano ka nga ba magkakaroon ng kasiguraduhan sa mga bagay na inaasahan mo pa lang? In other words, hindi pa nangyayari, hindi pa dumarating. No, in other words, di ba pag umaasa ka nga lang, parang may aspect that you're not sure whether it's gonna happen or not because you're simply hoping for it. But then faith is different. There is this assurance. There is this confidence that what you're hoping for is going to happen. No, it, it, that, that what you're hoping for will in fact come into reality. Okay? Not only that, sabi dito, it is certain of things that we do not see. Wow! How can you be certain of things that you do not see? In, 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 inside a court, no, if, you ever, if you ever end up uh, being in a court, no, in a court, pag may, may kaso ka, napakalaging kinatawag na evidence. Okay? And when you talk about evidence, evidence is something that you present, something that can be seen. That's why it's called an evidence. No? Evidence, exhibit A. Yan, evidence A. So you're actually showing it, meaning that it's something na nakikita. But look at what, what faith, how faith is defined. No? From the biblical perspective, sabi dyan, it is certain of what we do not see. That's why, you know, when you talk about faith, faith is in the realm of the Spirit. No? And then, verse 2, sabi dyan, and this is what the ancients, no, ano ibig sabihin ng ancients? This, was, this is what uh, the generations of believers were commended for. Ito yung sinasabi ni Paul that the just, no, have lived, no? basically they have lived through the power of faith. No? They were commended, they were, 
they were favored because of their faith. The reason they got, they, they were triumphant in their lives. The reason they were commended. The reason they got favor was only because of their faith. Okay? Let's check this other translation. I think I have it in the, the, uh, the, the, the Passion Translation, TPT Translation of the Bible. Sabi dito, now faith brings our hopes into reality. That is just beautiful. Faith brings our hopes into reality. No, that is not only beautiful, that is powerful. No, can you imagine that? No, yung pananampalataya daw natin, it brings into reality okay, our hopes. No, it becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. This is the testimony of faith. No, this testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. No, and as far as you and me are concerned, no, if, if it was faith that, uh, no, that, that somehow made no, the previous generation of men and women of God no, kumbaga parang triumph, then, then I believe that it is something that we need to, to, to walk into. We need to walk in faith. Okay? If we're going to survive or thrive or live through this pandemic, it is only by faith. Question is, paano nga ba yun? No? I would like to give you right now something more practical. Kasi nga, when you talk about faith, sometimes we think of faith as in the realm of the spiritual. Yes, it is spiritual, but it's also very much practical. Okay? Actually, uh, I was reading... Uh, 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 an article, no, actually not an article, but an excerpt from the book of uh, of John Piper in in actually their website in DesiringGod.com, and I came across no uh, uh, this this aspect about how he shares about how to practically walk in faith, and let me just share it to you and expound it to you right now. So there are actually five ways of how we can practically walk. In faith, number one. Let's go to number one. No? So how do we practically walk in faith? Number one, admit. Can you say this word out loud with me? Okay, so again, right now in, 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 in the comfort of your homes, I want you to say it out loud. Admit. Okay, admit. Admit what? In other words, admit a meaning down. Okay, admit, admit what? Admit that you cannot do anything by yourself. The first step in our walk of faith, in the practical walk of faith, is an admission, a realization that I cannot do anything by myself. You cannot do anything by yourself. Okay? Especially with regards to, for example, this pandemic. Now, no, have you ever thought of the possibility, you know, what if you acquire this? You, know, you end up being sick with COVID-19. No? And you know, we know that there is no cure. There is no 100% effective treatment. There is no medicine or vaccine. In other words, your only chance of surviving is what? Not on your own capacity. Indeed. You, no, you cannot survive this on your own. You cannot, no, not even the best doctors will be able to help you. There is no medicine. There is no cure. There is no vaccine. Okay? And your only hope is really in God to the point that you have to come to admit that once you, once you, if ever you get positive, I hope not. But then yung reality non, that you cannot do anything on your own. Okay? And that is also with the rest of our lives. Eh? No? So many times, no, we try so hard no, to do something to make, you know, to, to make our lives matter. But you need to understand the only way that our lives matter is if it is in Christ. The things that really matter in this world, if it is done 
in Christ, in the will of God. Okay? There's this amazing verse in John chapter 15. No? And, and sabi ni Jesus, John, John chapter 15, I think verse 15, no? sabi ni Jesus, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay? No, that's John chapter 15, verse 5. Verse 5. No? Jesus here illustrates okay, that our lives are like what? No? That, uh, okay, your Microsoft has encountered a problem. I'll take over from here. <laughs> Staff, thank you. So, <laughs> so as I was saying, no, uh, Sinabi ni Jesus, he illustrates, sabi niya, I am, no, I am the vine, you are the branches. No? Okay? And, and he talks about that if you abide in me, if you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. No? I want you to picture this. No? Yun nga, walang sanga na pwedeng mabu mabuhay, much more mamunga, kung hindi siya mananatiling naka-attach dun sa pinakapuno. The moment na maputo lang sanga, the sanga, the branch, cannot really do anything apart from the main trunk, from the main tree. It would be absurd to, you know, can you imagine if, if a branch, you know, even at its best, tries you know, to bear fruit, okay? Much more, you know, in fact, it cannot even live by itself. And, and so many times we try to make a living apart from God. No, we try to make uh, no, a life apart from God. And, and what, no, ano yung, ano yung ending noon? I, I remember this other verse in the Bible, no, sabi doon that even if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul, and how do you lose your soul? No? If your life is separated from God because of sin, you, you, you lose your soul. And can you imagine, sabi ni, sabi ni Jesus, even if you gain the whole world, and yet you lose your soul, that, no, you end up with nothing. Okay? Can you imagine if you can be the richest man in the world, you can be the richest person, the wealthiest person, or maybe not just the richest, but you gain a lot of things. Okay? But then you are separated from God. Your life, no, technically becomes meaningless apart from God. Okay? And, and sometimes we just have to come to that reality that apart from me, sabi ni Jesus, you can do nothing. I have a question for you guys. No? How many of you, nasubukan nyo na, you have actually tried na magpakabain? You have actually tried to change? Guess what happened to that? No? Nothing. Okay, we failed. Okay, and here up, you know, in I, it's so hard for us to even try to be good, and and even our best effort in trying to be good abounds to what failure, de ba? I'm sure, gusto mo na mang bumaet, gusto mo na mang mapabute. Pero how is it that despite the fact that we have been trying so hard to be good or to be better, we end up always failing? No. Why? Because apart from God, and you know what? You know what? That is what basically happened to Martin Luther. Okay, Martin Luther you know, was, was a priest. He was a Catholic priest. And he was trying so hard to gain God's favor. He was trying so hard to, to reach God and, and, and in the hopes that his goodness would somehow be able to uh, attain to, to the glory of God. But every time, you know what happened? Every time he would try to be good, he ended up what falling back into sin and the guilt no the guilt you know, was just overwhelming for him that he just felt so bad about you no know, about uh, uh, what was happening in his life you know, he was a priest he was doing actually good probably far better than most of us trying to serve god in his best possible way but he realized his best efforts no was not even enough to reach god and that's when he had that revelation, when finally he realized it is not by his works. Kaya pala sarabi sa Romans 3.23, no? 
uh, I believe uh, uh, I, the verse is there. And, and let me just uh, show it to you. No, gakrash yung uh, slides ng uh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. They're they're back. No, so okay. Sabi sa Romans three twenty three. Sabi dito, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Take note, all have sinned. That includes you and me, and we have fallen short. Of the glory of God. In reference, I remember this other verse in Isaiah, which says, okay, even our righteousness are just filthy rags in the Lord's eyes. Now, it is not that God looks down on us. Hindi po yun yung point on it. It is just the reality that God is holy and compared, no, compared to God's holiness, yung goodness natin, our best effort, no, doesn't really no doesn't really uh, kumaga parang ano eh uh, reach to the standard no to the level of God's holiness okay we have fallen short but then again you know it is just the realization that apart from me you can do nothing and and sometimes we just have to admit admit what admit na hindi natin kaya hindi mo kaya by yourself Hindi mo kaya mag-survive through this pandemic. No? By yourself, like, can you imagine the temptations that probably a lot of us are experiencing right now? Okay, let's face it, you know, I was, uh, we know that uh, recently there, there's this news that yung, yung pornography, which is already high in the Philippines, in fact, we are number one in the whole world when it comes to, you know, to watching pornography, all the more nag spike pa, and it would be absurd, or it, it would be, uh, uh, yeah, it would be absurd to assume that we believers are not uh, affected by that, no? And then, then dun yung yung temptation, no? even if you're not trying to do it, even if you're not intentionally doing it, no, but just the fact that you have your gadgets with you and sometimes you're just innocently scrolling, no, going through news feeds. I was shocked one time. I was just going over and I, I thought, no, when, like for example, TikTok, I thought TikTok was just an innocent, fun thing. People dance on it. And lo and behold, I was shocked. Like what is happening? Like some, some people, some girls were, were even showing their wares into TikTok. And if you are not careful, you know, you end up what? You end up failing. No? And, and, ano nang nangyari? You end up what? Uh, uh, lusting and, and engaging and before you know it, no? You have given into temptation. So what, what do you do? On your own, hindi mo talaga kaya. Bring yourself to the point of admitting before God, God, I can fight this by myself. No, you cannot fight depression by yourself. No, no amount. Sometimes we, we know this. No amount of counsel or no amount of friends, no amount of medicine sometimes can heal the discouragement, the depression that we are experiencing. And sometimes you just have to admit, God, I'm going to depression. No, I'm 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 fearful. I'm I'm discouraged. I'm anxious. Okay? Ito yung mga bagay that uh, minsan parang andari lang. Just remain positive. But there are times positive thinking no, in our own way it doesn't simply cut. It doesn't simply help. What helps? It's the admission before God that God, I cannot do anything. Okay? On my own, hindi ko kaya. But no, no. The good thing is we don't have to stop there. Yes, that is the first step. But we can proceed to you know, further on because in the same way that we cannot do anything on our own with God's help. I'm just reminded of the verse. Okay? All things are possible to them that believe. In the same way that we cannot do anything by ourselves, no, God is able to empower us. So, which leads me to my second point. So, first is admit. Admit your weakness. Admit, know your failings before God. Admit that you cannot do 
anything by yourself. Na, na, nalala ko lang yung verse sa Psalms, no? My heart, my strength, they fail. Okay? But God is the strength of my heart. My portion forever. That's just a beautiful verse, no? You admission that, yes, Lord, my heart, my strength, they, they fail. I'm weak. I'm frail. But you are my strength. Okay? Which leads me to my second point. Number two. Pray. Okay? Pray. Ano ibig sabihin ng pray? Now look at, look at what I've pointed out there. Pray. Pray for the particular help that we need for. Pray for the particular. In other words, no, our prayers are to be specific. Kung lalapit tayo sa Panginoon to pray, sometimes kasi when we pray, we end up praying what I call general prayers. No? Yung, if, uh, I have a term for that. I call it the Miss Universe type of prayers. Okay? Ano yung Miss Universe type of prayer? Okay? Uh, ito yung ano eh, yung parang, di ba si Miss Universe pag in-interview mo? Lahat ng Miss Universe, ang tanging hanggan nila sa mundo ay world peace. <laughs> now, what's your dream for the world? I dream of world peace. Okay? And, and it's such a noble thing. But then again, okay, it's just, you know, it, all it is is a wish. Okay? But when you talk, and sometimes our prayers are like, like that. It's too general. Lord, heal the world. Lord, uh, heal the sick people. And, and tama naman yun. Of course, we need to pray for the sick people. Uh, infected with COVID-19 na wala nang mamatay. But I, but, but I would like to point out the idea that our prayers are to be more specific. Okay? Sabi dun sa binasa natin kanina, pray specifically for the help that you need. Di ba kanina nabanggit natin, nabanggit natin that you are to admit your weakness that apart from God, apart from Christ, you cannot do anything. Okay? And so now in prayer, No, coming to God with an admission of your weakness, you pray for what you need. So what do you need? I'd like to ask you, what do you need? Okay. For some of us, some of us need courage. Okay. And, and that is exactly what you need to pray for. Lord, natatakot ako, kinakabahan ako. Lord, give me courage. Give me courage in this time of crisis. Maybe for us, our need is to what? Our need is, check this out. No, our need is, uh, we need to be more patient. No? We need to be more patient with our family, with our husband or our wife. How many of you, one of the things that this uh, pandemic, this ECQ has exposed you, you realize that may mga bagay pala na hindi mo makasundo ang asawa mo or nanay mo or anak mo eh. No, dati naman, nung walang pandemic, hindi kayo masyadong nagkakairitihan. Di, you know why? Because, well, technically, you spend less time with one another. No? Most of the time, you are at work or you are at school. No? Sa umaga lang nagkikita, bago, bago pumasok. Sa gabi, usually pagod na, magdi-dinner, tas tulog na. Okay? And, and less less interaction, but all of a sudden, we are together 24-7 for how many, what? More than two months already. And, and then, you, know, you start to become impatient. You, know, you, you become irritable. Eh, no, parang pagod na pagod ka na. Nahiyan na lang. Siya na lang palagi mong kasama. Naiinis ka na. No, and maybe, maybe what you need is to pray, Lord. Give me more patience. Give me more love. Kaya pala yung definition ng love is love is patient, love is kind. Okay? Maybe you need to ask God for kindness. Lord, I need to be more kind. I need to, or maybe, maybe you know, some of you need strength to overcome temptation. Or, or maybe some of you need to pray for your daily needs. Remember that prayer that Jesus taught us? No, yung the Lord's Prayer? Nung sabi ni Jesus, this is how you pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then Jesus goes on to tell us, give us this day our daily bread. No? 
Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, he is inviting us to pray, to ask God to pray for your daily needs. God knows that you are in need. In fact, Jesus says that he already knows even before you say it, but he still wants us to verbalize our need. What do you need? Kapatid, what do you need? Do you need patience? Do you need strength? No? Do you need courage in this particular time? Okay? Pray to God for the particular help that you actually need. Now, there's a verse that I would like to share with you. No? Can you put up that verse? Okay. So you put up the verse. Okay, look at this. God invites us. No? Okay. Then call on me. Put up, put up all the way the verse. No? Then call on me when you are in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. Psalm 50, verse 50. Wow, that is just beautiful. Here is God inviting you. Sabi ng Lord, He's even telling you, call on me when you are in trouble. Are you in trouble? No. This, this crisis for a lot of us has spelled trouble. And God tells us, go ahead, anak. Call on me when you're in trouble and I will rescue you and you will give me glory. God wants to be glorified in our lives. God, no, when, when He's able to answer our prayers, no, that is a point when we are able to give glory back to God. And God invites us, challenges us. Go ahead. No, don't just pray general prayers. Pray for the particular specific prayer that you need. No, and when you pray, I'm, I'm just reminded of this, this verse that James tells us in J James, uh, I think chapter 5, no, uh, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Sabi dito ni James, no? But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, I want you to understand this. No? James is, is saying something very important here when it comes to prayer. When we pray, we should pray in faith. In other words, no, okay, you must believe. Believe with all your heart and not doubt. No? And he outlines here somehow the reason why a lot of our prayers go unanswered. Kaya pala may mga panalangin tayo na hindi nasasagot. Bakit? Honestly, let's be honest with ourselves. How many of you have prayed prayers that kayo mismo are actually doubting that God will answer them? Here you are asking God for something specific and yet you doubt whether God's gonna answer you. I have a, a very interesting story that happened with my seven-year-old daughter, no, si Catherine. Okay? Uh, during this ECQ, of course, no, a seven-year-old, you cannot imagine how bored they are in this, in this time, especially kami, no, hindi naman malaki yung bahay namin, there's snow, and then she can't get out, no. And plus, yun nga, summer na, di ba? Supposedly, by this time, we should be out in the beach or swimming somewhere, enjoying the summer. And yet, here we are stuck in our homes, no? And, and one day, one day no, uh, uh, she saw that her cousin, no, yung aking sister, yung aking sister, bought a, an inflatable swimming pool. And sabi niya, Daddy, can we buy a pool as well? And so, sabi ko, sige, sige, para nga, Hindi na siya board. I actually tried to look for a pool in Lazada and, and praise God, I saw something that seemed na available. Kasi they were, during that time, about three, hindi pa, hindi pa nag, hindi pa nag, hindi pa nag, ano, hindi pa modified, no? So this was yung kasagsagan para, ano, kasagsagan pa talaga na, ano, ng uh, ECQ. And, and a lot of, a lot of items were not available on Lazada, but apparently, there was this one uh, one seller and it seems is you no know, the the pool was available so i i click buy and and uh, and you know if if you're if you're familiar with lasada no it appeared no nakalagay na doon processing and so my my daughter every day she would always ask me dad is it arriving already 
Yung sabi ko, hindi, wala pa matigal pa yun. That is it arriving away. Like every single day, probably that lasted for a week and still, wala pa nga rin, no? Hindi pa tumatakbo. And, and, and then, after a few more days, yung tone niya of expectancy, no, changed. It was more of a doubt. Sabi niya, he was already telling me that, di naman na yata talaga darating yun. Every day she would say that. That, yung pool, di na darating yun. That, di na darating yun. And then, at one point I told her, anak, I'm gonna tell you something, no? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that if you pray, you have to believe. Because if you don't believe, katulad ng sinabi si James, if you doubt, don't even expect that God will answer your prayer. Sabi ko, Catherine, if you keep on doubting, if you yourself cannot believe what you're asking, then guess what? No? Don't expect that your prayer will be answered. Your request will be answered. No? And, and, and you know what? After a couple of days, and hindi and, pa rin nagbago yung attitude niya. You know what happened? <laughs> Ang tagal namin siguro, mga two weeks na kami or three weeks kami naghihintay. After three weeks naghihintay, hindi gumagalaw yung processing. All of a sudden, nakita ko na lang, your order has been cancelled. Your order is out of stock. Like, oh my goodness. And I told Catherine, anak, it's not coming anymore. Why? Well, it just got cancelled out of stock now. Why? I think because you didn't believe. Okay. And then I told her, are you willing to believe again? Like, really believe? Sabi niya, yes, daddy. So, I ordered again. And, and, and now, she, she refused to doubt. And you know what happened? Guess what? No, nakita ko yung, yung tinata ko sa Lazada. No, actually, is it yesterday or today? No, so, nag-move na. Di ba? No, na-attack na from the hub. No, it was already packed and it was moving. And yesterday, na, nakita ko na na, your package has arrived in the Philippines. So, it's gonna be delivered any time now. Why? Because she believed. Okay? Prayer, real prayer, is to be accompanied by faith. You have to believe. You have to believe. Okay? Believe for the particular help that you need. Number three. No? The third point that I would like to share is not just about praying. It is about trusting. No, trust. Number three is trust a specific promise. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng trust a specific promise? No? Again, sometimes, no, yung trust natin kay God, there is no question that you and I, you should trust God. No? Kung meron isang no, tao, na dapat natin pagkatiwalaan. Okay? A being that we should trust. There's no other being that we should trust or we can trust other than God. But then, nakalagay dyan, trust God for a specific promise. No? I, want to, I want us to go to this verse okay? in, uh, I think, Chronicles. No? Okay? Okay, second, I think this is in Second Chronicles. Okay, they were logged out again. Uh, are you back, guys? Anyway, so nakalagay dyan dun sa, dun sa verse na yon that uh, si Jehoshaphat was challenging the nation of Israel. He was inviting Judah in Jerusalem sabi yun, to trust, put their trust in the Lord. To believe the prophets no? That is what, what that, that verse was saying. Let, let, me just, uh, okay, let me just look at my slide right now. Okay. Okay, so here's the verse, no? This is uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Sabi dyan, early the next morning, the people went out in the, uh, near the wild country of Tekoa. As, as they were starting out, Jehoshaphat addressed them with his words, People of Judah and Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God, and you may be able to stand your ground. 
believe what his prophets, no, what his prophets have told you, no, what his prophets tell you, okay, and you will succeed. The first thing that Jehoshaphat encourages the people of Jerusalem and Judah is to put their trust in the Lord their God. Let me give you the context of this, no. There were three nations that rose up against the nation of Israel or the nation of Judah and Jerusalem. Okay? And definitely they were the Judah and Jerusalem was outnumbered. These were three powerful nations. Their armies were far more superior. Their weapons are far more superior. And there was no question that Judah was going to lose. No, they cannot trust. In their army, their army was very small. They cannot trust in their weapons. Their weapons were no match for the mighty weapons, you know, the chariots and the horses of uh, the armies that, that rose up against them. And now you need to understand, those nations were trusting in their ability. You know, they were trusting in their own capacity. They were trusting in their own strength. The strength of their armies, the strength of their chariots and horses, the strength of their kings. Jehoshaphat had none of that. But what they had, sabi ni Jehoshaphat, and, and, you know, trust in the Lord your God. Trust in the Lord your God. Okay. But not only that, he said this, believe what his prophets tell you. you know? Now when you talk about the prophets, he's not just only referring to people here. Okay? You need to understand that the Old Testament, you know, it is no, you know, they uh, the, the nation of Israel call it the law and the prophets. The law is the first five books of Moses, you know, uh, the Pentateuch or the Torah. And then the rest of the book is considered to be the prophets. Why? It was written by the, the prophets of Israel, by the prophets of Judah and Jerusalem. So when, when, when Je Jehoshaphat was saying this, believe what his prophets tell you, what he was saying was, Believe the specific promises that God has spoken to you. What do I mean by this? Okay. God has abundant promises for you and me. Okay. Where do you find God's promises? Basically in the Bible. Grab it. There's just hundreds or maybe thousands of God's promises for you and for me. Okay? And those are the promises that you can trust. You know, hindi ka naman pwede magtiwala kung wala kang mapagkakatiwalaan or more specifically, wala kang mapanghahawakan. No? Okay? And, and, and when you're gonna trust something, like for example, no, when, when you talk about a bank, have you ever wondered, why can you trust the bank? Okay? You have no relations with, the, I'm sure you have no relations with the owners of the bank. These are people who are strangers to us. No, but why do we you not know, trust them with our money? Okay? What is the process? When you go to a bank and you deposit money there, let's say you put 10,000 pesos, 20,000 pesos, what do they give you? They give you a passbook, okay? which is an evidence, a receipt, that you actually have 20,000 pesos with them. Okay? So let's say, what if the bank no, eventually says, no, no, wala kasi nandiyan po kasi ito sa akin. Guess what? No? You can come to them, you can come before the government of the Philippines to prove that you have money. Yung nga, meron kang task mo. Nakalagay doon, may 20,000 ako sa'yo. In other words, may pinanghahawakan ka. Hindi ka lang naman basta naglagay ng pera doon eh. No, may pinanghahawakan ka. Yun yung confidence mo, yun yung trust mo. No, you're holding on to something. You know why this is so difficult for people to trust God? Because really, they have not spent time in the Bible. They have no idea of the abundance of promises that God has spoken to us, to you and to me in His Word. Okay? The only way that we can really put our trust God is to be able to trust in His Word, to trust in His promises trust in a specific promise what do i mean by trust in a specific promise let's say you know you're going to a difficult time in your life you're going through a crisis no uh, example there's no question that one of the things that is plaguing us right now is fear okay we are unsure about tomorrow 
we are unsure about whether we're going to have a job or whether our savings are enough. We are unsure. What if you, you, you get infected? What if you, yeah, the possibility of death? And that's why there's so much fear out there with regards to this pandemic. People are fearful. No? How can you get rid of fear when you have a promise that you can hold on to? For example, no, yun nga eh, nababalot ka ng takot, then you remember God's promise to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 to 8. Anong sabi ng Lord doon? God promises Joshua and promises us, as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you. Okay? And then God tells Joshua, sabi niya, be strong and be courageous. Three times God repeats those words. Be strong and courageous. In other words, be strong. Do not be afraid. No? Why was God telling Joshua to not be afraid? What was the reason for him to not be afraid? Simple. It was with the fact that God was going to be with him. I don't know about you. No? When, when I was a kid, when I was a young boy, I was fearful. I, I was afraid of the dark. I hate it when my dad or my mom, for example, we, I, we, we used to live in the province in, the, in, in Sambales. No? And uh, I remember, so pag-iigibing ka ng tubig eh. So sa labas, no, may poso kami. And, and I hate it when my dad would tell me to get some water from the poso, especially during evenings. Why? Natatakot ako, no? In your child, you have this wild imagination, no? I'm, ayaw na ayaw kong tumingin doon sa mga puno namin sa likod bahay. <laughs> because, no, baka makakita, may imagine, makakita ako ng kung anong maligno, kapre, aswang, and, and no, nandun na yung tinatamad ka, but more than tinatamad ako, I think I was really afraid of, of ano, and, and so, ano na niya, nagpapasama ako. And just the fact that, diba, na may kasama ka, it takes away your fear. And when you know the promise of God in His Word, sabi niya, I will be with you. No? That promise has been repeated over and over again, both in the Old and the New Testament. No? Jesus, before ascending into heaven, what did He tell His disciples? What did He tell you and me? I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many of us know that promise by heart? Know to the point that you can hold on to that promise. And when you're able to hold on to that promise, guess what? Fear disappears. You can trust on a specific promise. Ano pa? Let's say you're worried. No, medyo similar yon. Worried, fearful. But let's say you're worried, you're anxious. Yung nabalisa ka na sa nangyayari. And then you're reminded about the words of Jesus. Sabi niya, in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, do not worry. Okay? Consider the birds of the air. They, no, sana, do not worry about what? Do not worry about what to eat. No? About the clothes that uh, you are to wear. Look at, look at the birds. No? Uh, they, do not, uh, they do not sow nor reap. They, in other words, they don't even work. They... Uh, what's this? They, no, they don't have savings, and yet God provides for them. No? And then Jesus says, How much more so will you? Kung yung ibun nga eh, God makes sure na inaalagaan niya. Sabi ni Lord, Hindi ba't mas mahalaga ka sa ibun? And then he goes on to say, This is what you need to do. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the promise, all these things shall be added unto you. Wow! I don't know about you, but that is just an amazing promise. Know that I don't have to worry, that you don't have to worry about what to eat or what to wear or the, the things that this world is so concerned about. For the main reason that if God takes care of birds, He takes care of you and that if you seek Him, His promise is, he will provide for you. All these things shall be added unto you. What a beautiful promise. You can hold on to that. 
no? you can hold on to the promise of God's word. Trust in the specific promise of God. Alamin mo yung salita ng Diyos. Kaya ka lang naman hindi makapagtiwala kasi nga, eh, no, yun, no, you don't know the word of God. I, I am reminded of this verse in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Paano nga ba nag-increase yung faith? No? Is it true that there are some people you could say that they have weak faith? In other words, konting pagyanig pa lang. It's not really much of a trouble but then their lives are already collapsing. They're giving up. They're easily discouraged. They're depressed. Okay? No? So, no? They, they, they're down na sila kagad and, and yet, okay? and, and yet there are people na anting din na yung pinagdaanan. No, to the point of death, and yet their faith remains to be strong. How is that even possible? Some people, just a little bit of crisis, just a little bit of difficulty, they're down, discouraged, depressed, no, giving up on God, giving up on their faith, backsliding already. And yet there are those who are all really like you know, suffering a lot, being persecuted even at the point of death, and yet they're still holding on. What's the difference? Okay? What makes others' faith strong? Okay, Romans in in uh, okay, in yeah, okay Romans chapter ten verse seventeen. Sabi dito no. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Okay, what does this verse say? Faith. The reason faith increases. The the reason faith comes to us is by what? By hearing and hearing. God's Word. The more you spend time in God's Word, the more you meditate in God's Word, the more you're able to hold on to God's promise. You cannot hold on to something that you do not know. You have to know it, and you have to know it by heart. Not just head knowledge, but something that takes root in your life. It becomes what you call an experiential faith. No, it, no, and the more you meditate, the more you spend time, the more you choose. Ang problema sa atin, a lot of us, the only time we get to encounter God's Word, I hope not, pero Sunday service lang, cell meeting lang. Okay? No, it, it's sad that, that some of you guys, no, despite the ECQ, okay, you have watched no, uh, uh, and, and finished no, different Netflix series and we haven't, what? We, till now, we haven't spend considerable time with God's Word. Kaya pala yung faith natin, mahina. Kaya pala we cannot hold on to God's promise. That's why we cannot trust. Okay? You want to learn how to trust God and His promises? You have to know the promises. How do you know the promise? Okay? You keep on hearing and hearing God's Word. The more you know God and His Word, the more your faith will be established, the more that you can trust Him. Trust God for the specific promises in your life. Okay? Number four, last two. Okay? I love number four. You know? The fourth aspect in walking in faith, practically walking in faith, is act. Okay? The 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 line there is act and work out our salvation. Okay? Faith is not just only about believing and trusting. It, you know, it has to come to the point of acting. You know? In other words, there is an action. I want us to go to the, to the following verse in Philippians. You know? Check out this verse. Okay? Sabi dito ni Paul, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Well, this is such a beautiful verse. First of all, sabi ni Paul, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Okay? I have a question for you. Okay. How many of you here, no? Iba yung pakikitungo mo. Iba yung, what's this? Your action changes depending on the people that you are with. Okay, what do I mean? 
how many of you you actually are better or you try to perform well when your supervisor is present okay you actually try to appear good no when your for example your pastor or cell leader is there sino yung parang ay i see ay si pastor ay hallelujah praise the lord ay jesus is good pastor <laughs> no and, and and you know let, let's face it a lot of us are like that. I have to admit, sometimes are like I'm like that as well. Okay, that in the presence of people, you know, we appear to be more obedient. You know, we try to act much better. We I we try to do, you know, good. You know, pero now check this out. What has happened? You know, technically, we are physically absent from one another. And then Paul was saying. You know, as you have obeyed me when I was present, much more when I am absent. Okay? My wife and I was listening to this uh, great uh, pastor and preacher, see, Dr. Mike Murdoch. Sabi niya, he says that uh, if you really want to know parang, uh, a person for who, who he really is, no? okay? yung tao, lumalabas yung tuo niyang pagkatao, okay? apart from the influence of others. What, what does he mean by that? You know, we have this tendency to sometimes do better okay, when other people are around. No? In fact, he, he uses this illustration. He, he actually uh, gives this advice to single women. No? Sabi niya ganun, uh, lady, single lady, single girls. No? If a guy, for example, courts you and the only reason, and, and, and and as he's courting you, he starts attending church and you're flattered because, wow, this guy starts attending church and maybe he's really, uh, what's this, no? uh, giving his life to the Lord. No? Hey, what, what if all of a sudden, no? <laughs> Bastin mo siya. No? Will this guy, I'm not saying by the but what I'm saying is, what if apart from you, apart from your influence, Will he still love God? Will he still go to church? We, will, he, will he still serve the Lord? Or is it only you? Okay? That you know, is the main factor why this guy is coming to church. Okay? And, and, and so you, you, know, you might want to consider that because I've, I've seen that happen. You know, the moment sometimes na sinagot na, Hindi na lang hindi nag-church si brother, pati si sister hindi na rin nag-church. Okay? And, and yun nga, yun, na-influence na. So, okay? no, yun nga, well, who are we in the, no, who are we by ourselves is, is, that is the person that we really are. Okay? Anyway, going back to what the Apostle Paul was saying, sabi niya, in, not only in my presence, but all the more in my absence, no, Continually work out. I love that word. Work out. Sabi nyo nga, work out. Okay? Let me explain a work out. When you talk about work, work has this connotation that when, when, when you talk about work, work is something that is hard. You, you, you never hear the term easy work. No? How, how, do we usually, uh, how do we usually talk about work? We talk of work as hard work. I think like in reality, you know, real work is difficult work. Mahirap ito. Okay? It's not really work if it's easy. Right? No? All, all, all work, I believe. It's not, I'm not saying you're not enjoying it. It's just the reality that real work is somehow difficult. Mahirap. Okay? Tinatrabaho mo ito. And I, I want to ask you something. Sabi natin, we need to work out. We need to act. In other words, may gagawin kayo. Have you ever considered ano yung pinapagawa ng Lord sa you in this season? Like, have you really asked God, Lord, yun nga, ano ba ang gustong gawin? Hindi pwedeng na-bless ka lang sa word eh. No? I want you to know, may gagawin ka. Sabihin mo, if you're seated with someone, with a family, sabihin mo, may gagawin ka eh. God has something for you to work on. Okay? And it would be a total waste of this last couple of weeks and months if you don't get to do what God has purposed you to do. If you don't get to act you know, 
on what God is prompting you to act on, whether it has something to do with your character or something that you really have to do. Okay? Like, what do you mean by act? Okay, ano yung mga kailangan natin gawin? Ano ba yung posibleng pinapagawa ng Lord sa inyo? Okay? Example, how many of you ang pinapagawa ng Lord sa inyo talaga is to be more patient? Let's face it. No? Patience is a difficult work. Okay? When, when, no, yun nga, for the longest time, maybe some of you, uh, uh, as I was saying a while ago, no, yung mga mag-asawa, hindi sila sanayin na palagi sa magkasama. You know, for sudden, no, some, some issues are coming out and you're losing your patience. And isn't it true? It's hard, di ba? Kaya nang pagpapasensya ka, nagtitimpi ka eh. Pinagpapasensyahan mo, hindi madali magpasensya. Kaya nga, I'm, I'm wondering, why is it of all the things that Paul, uh, the first thing that he, the first word that he uses on how to define love, ano sabi niya, love is patient. Like, wow. He could have said something like, love is a many splendor thing. Love is sweet. No, it's it can move mountains. Ganda sana. No, no, sabi niya, love is patient. Napaka-brutal, di ba? <laughs> no, and, and why? Because, you know, when you talk about love, love is not an easy thing. It is, it is difficult to love. Just ask the married couples, no, yun nga, magpapasensya ka, pero hindi lang yun. You know, sa inyo, may, Maria, so, magpapasensyaan mo yung anak mo, no, Pinipigil, yun nga eh, no? naiirita ka na, pinagpapasensyaan mo, magulang mo, iritang-irita ka na, pero hindi eh. Maybe that's what God wants you to act on, to be more patient, to be more kind, no? to be careful with your words. Yun eh, minsan na ah, kahit ako, I realize I'm not careful with the way I act before my kids and then no, you get irritated no? and, and I need to work on that with my wife. Okay? But we, we need, you know, it is hard work. Ano pa? You know what is really hard work? You know what is difficult to do? Maybe for some of you, what is God asking of you na kailangan mong gawin? You need to say sorry. How many of you know saying sorry is work? It's difficult. Okay, especially when what? Especially if in your own mind, akala mo, or ang alam mo, tama ka. Ba't ako magsusorry? Tama ako eh. <laughs> right? I'm sure every one of us has struggled with that. Why would I even ask forgiveness when I am right? And it is difficult. No? Yun nga eh, tama ako eh. Pero, no, can you imagine what if tama ka nga? And dahil nasa tama ka, no? Okay, tatlong buwan o dalawang buwan o isang buwan na kayo hindi nag-uusap ng asawa mo, bakit? Tama ka eh. Tama ka. Oo nga, tama ka. Kaya yun. No, may tama ka yung dalawa. <laughs> diba? Hindi kayo nag-uusap. Hindi po mas mahirap yun na nahirapan kayo. And I know it's difficult to humble yourself and say sorry. But sometimes that is what God would want you to do. Okay? What else? Maybe it's not about doing something, but it's about stopping something. Some of you, you just have to stop. My, stop what? If you're already fallen into, let's say, pornography, you're struggling with it, no? Just stop. Just say, Lord, on my own, hindi ko kahit to. I cannot. But Lord, I want to stop. And I'm stopping right now. And, and, and you know, ask for help. Uh, you know, tell your cell leader, tell your pastor, that's what I'm struggling. I want to stop. I need help. And I want to stop. And I'm stopping. First, it comes with a decision of firmness. I'm, I'm stopping. Okay? What else? Baka naman hindi porn. Baka naman, no? Iba sa atin, yun nga, wala nang ginawa kundi nag-Netflix na lang. I'm not saying that is wrong. I, I, I do watch once in a while, pero... If all you ever do was yun nga, just binge on Netflix, like nakailang, no, kras, tapos na yung, yung dap, alam niyo bakit yung series? Supposedly yung series, binibigayan, naalala ko nung time namin, pag may series, inaabangan mo nga eh, hindi, na dati nga once a week eh. Naalala ko may mga programs sa TV, 
no na once a week mong aabangan yung yung no yung anticipate mo no tinutuwa kang patience and then all of a sudden no naging everyday na yung series okay it's meant yun nga ano supposedly dahan-dahan no pero anong ginagawa natin okay yung dapat sana isang buwan na dadahan-dahanin iisang gabihin mo <laughs> pagkatapos pagkatapos ano nangyari iba na naman some of you you just have to stop it. Maybe pause for a while and and start maybe spending time in God's Word or with interacting with your family. Okay? No, or stop what? Yung iba, wala nang ginawa kundi mag-tiktok. No? Stop it! Stop it! Right? I mean, there's a time for it. There are things that sometimes we need to stop doing. Maybe that's what God is asking you to do. No? Continually work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, we can only de- do this in the presence of God. Okay? To will and to act. No, no, no. And the good thing is, sabi dito, it is God who, who empowers us. No? If, if, let's go to, back to that verse. No? Okay? In, in Philippians. No? Ano sabi dyan? Is my uh, assistant still there? Hey, they, did they? Okay. So, no. Sabi jan di sabi dito no. Therefore, my dear friends, no. Not only, you know, not only in my in my in my presence, but also in my absence, no. To work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you. Now that is, that is just amazing. It is God who works in you. Maybe on your own, di mo ayang hi, no pahintuin yung mga bagay that you're struggling with. But with God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Okay, in James chapter two verse seventeen, ang sabi jan. Uh, James chapter 2 verse 17 let me share my screen in the, in the same way faith by itself it is not accompanied by action is dead okay ano pinapagawa sa iyo ng Lord may gagawin ka gawin mo na act on it otherwise this faith is just going to be nothing. It's going to be dead. No? And finally, my last point. Okay? Thanksgiving. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. What do you mean by thank the Lord? No? In Psalm 106, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Okay, the last step in our walk in faith is to always thank the Lord. How is it possible to thank the Lord? Are you telling us, Pastor, na pwede tayo magpasalamat sa Diyos despite this pandemic, despite the suffering? Yes. You know why? Sabi niyan, He is good. He is good. God is good all the time. He is not only good when, no, when He answers our specific prayers. He is good even if it seems He doesn't answer them. What do I mean by this? No, even in the midst of our suffering, God is able to do something. He is working out something in our lives. Okay? I was... I was reflecting on this. No? For example, si, si Joseph. Remember Joseph? When he was thrown into prison for a sin that he did not commit, when he was accused of molesting and raping Potiphar's wife, when in reality, no, uh, he, actually, you know, he actually ran away from that temptation. And yet despite that, no, he was falsely accused and he ended up being in prison. I'm thinking, 
Could it be that from day one, from day one, okay, Joseph, no, Joseph already prayed that he get out of prison. That is it possible that every single day that passes by in his life during his time, he actually prayed na makaalis siya, mapalaya siya. In fact, no, in his interaction with one of the prisoners, no, yung, yung uh, what's this, yung butler ni Pharaoh, di ba sabi niya nga, when you get out of here, please put in a word to Pharaoh for me. Please tell Pharaoh that I'm falsely accused. In other words, he's been praying, he's been asking people for help. And yet, sabi doon, I think, if I'm not mistaken, his prison term lasted for three years. He didn't even know when he was going to get out, if ever he was going to get out. Why did God seem that, it seemed that his prayers didn't go answered? Did God abandon him? No. In the midst of that, God was preparing him something great. That in the midst of the suffering, okay, God was was planning something amazing all along. And you know what happened, right? As a result of his, him being in prison, he met the, the butler of Pharaoh and that connection led him to what? Led him to Pharaoh and Pharaoh bestowing on him you know, uh, the, uh, to be the most powerful man in all of Egypt, okay? second to Pharaoh. That is amazing. Yung pala yung sinabi sa verse Romans 8.28, all things work out good for them that love God. Even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of this crisis, God is working something in you, in me. That is why we can thank the Lord. No, I was thinking about uh, si Dr. Ravi Zacharias. For those of you who do not know him, this great uh, man of God, no, uh, very amazing apologist, but at the same time, so humble. And he was struck with cancer uh, early this year. It was quick. It like they caught it caught him by surprise. No? And just like that, just the other day, you know, he already died. And yes, we were praying. He was praying that he would still live, but then he died. No? Do we not thank the Lord? No, he did thank the Lord. He thanked the Lord that even in the midst of that suffering, no, he proved that God is great and, and his life continually glorified God. Okay? And what am I saying? We can thank God in the midst of suffering. And that is how the just, the righteous, like you and me, are able to live in faith. To recap, Know what I've been sharing, okay? Just a quick recap of everything. No? How do we practically walk in faith? Admit. Admit that you cannot do anything by yourself. Pray for the particular help that we have need for. Trust, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. I want you to trust the Lord. Some of you need to trust the Lord. And trust, be trusting in His promises. Act. Definitely may pinapagawa ang Lord. Specifically sa inyo. What, what do you need to work on? What do you need to act on? Do you need to be more generous? Do you need to give? No. Do you need to be loving and be more patient? Do you need to stop doing something? And finally, thanksgiving. Thank the Lord. I want us to pray. Father, we just want to thank you, God, for this evening. We thank you for your word. And I know, Lord God, it is not an accident that uh, we are hearing this message on faith. Lord, in the same way that Martin Luther got this revelation from Romans 1.17, that the righteous will triumph, will live by faith and through faith alone. Lord, we know that in the same way, us going through this time of crisis, going through this difficult time in, in, in our nation, in the world, Lord, we know that the only way that we're able to go through this and survive and triumph over this, over this pandemic, over this virus, is through faith. Lord, help us to walk in faith. Help us to admit 
na hindi namin kayo naroon. We acknowledge that. We come before you tonight and we acknowledge, Lord, that, that Lord, we, we, cannot, we cannot do things on our own. And so we come to you and we pray. We pray and we ask for your help. We call on you. We call on you for courage. We call on you for strength. We call on you for our weaknesses, Lord God. We call on you, Lord God, to remove our fears. We call on you, Lord God, to extend our love and patience with one another. We call on you, Lord God, to grant us a generous heart, Lord. And Lord, we, right now we also trust. Help us to trust in your promises and know your abundance of promises, Lord. Lord, we, we pray, Lord God, that as we trust you, we will act. Kagalaw kami, kikilos kami. We're going to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, knowing, Lord God, that it is you who wills and works in us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you are able to work in us and you are empowering us, Lord God, to do the things that are even impossible for us to do by ourselves, but by your grace through faith. We're able to accomplish them. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that we're still alive. Thank you, Lord, that we, we still have food to eat. Thank you, Lord, that even if we don't have food to eat, thank you that, Lord, Lord, we are experiencing this suffering, Lord God. Maybe some of us are being laid off. Our, our businesses, Lord God, are, are, are not doing that well. We thank you, Lord, because we know that this is working something in us and we have reason to rejoice even for the suffering, even for this crisis. And Lord, I, I, just, I just declare, Lord God, over everyone your strength. Lord, for those of us who need healing physically, Lord, heal us. For those of us who are feeling depressed and, and emotionally troubled, Lord God, we come to you and I pray for for people right now, and I am agreeing with them, Lord, that, Lord, you will minister to those who are going through emotional struggles, emotional pain, fear, anxiety, depression. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, in faith, let faith arise in Jesus. Lord, we trust in your goodness right now, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, dun sa mga... Uh, na wala ng trabaho, I pray that in faith, Lord, as they seek and pray for a new job or for them to be reinstated back, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that, Lord, we will, we will, we will find a job that will be able to, will, will be an instrument, Lord God, Lord, to provide for our daily needs in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And maybe there's some of you guys who are here. And just in case lang, that you haven't really surrendered your life to the Lord, I want to invite you. Jesus is real. Faith is not uh, a leap in the dark. It is to trust a God who is real, who is able to save you and rescue you. He's not just religion. Okay? He offers us a relationship with Him. Well, 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross for us. Why did He die on the cross? Because He knows that we cannot do it on our own. He became the bridge back to God. Yes, no, it's true our sin you know, has somehow caused us to fall short of God. But then God, Jesus, His cross, bridged the way for us to come to the Lord. I remember... Some 30 plus years ago, I was just a mere freshman in, in, uh, in Los Banos, no? in UP Los Banos at that time. Somebody shared to me about Jesus. Akala ko si Jesus religion lang. I've been a religious person all my high school life, but I never had a relationship with, with Jesus. And that's, when that, that's about that time when it dawned on me that this is not about religion. But this is about a God who loved me, who gave himself for me, in whom he deserves my full trust, in whom he deserves my full surrender and my faith. And I remember one evening, I surrendered my life to Jesus. Somebody shared Jesus to me and we prayed. You know, 
in, in my room, and I gave my life to Jesus. And my life was changed. And I pray, I believe that tonight, some of you, you just maybe, you maybe want to do that right now. If you want to give your life to Jesus, if you want to experience His grace, His saving power to save you from your sin, to save you from your bondages, to save you from the discouragement, the confusion, the fear that is hounding you, I want you to pray with me tonight. Can we just pray? I want you to simply repeat after me. I'd just like to lead you into the simple prayer of trusting the Lord. And, and come and repent of our sins. Sige, pray tayo. Lord Jesus. Lord, repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Tonight, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I ask forgiveness for all my sins. Patawarin mo ko, Lord, sa aking mga kasalanan. And tonight, I ask you, Lord, to come into my life, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Starting today, I would like to follow you all the days of my life. Change me, Lord. Set me free. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, let me pray for you right now. Lord, to everyone who prayed that for you tonight, Lord, I pray that you will just fill them in their homes right now, in their hearts. Let your presence, Holy Spirit, let there be a tangible manifestation of your love, your forgiveness in their lives. Wash away their sin. Set them free from any bondage. Bring healing to those who need physical healing right now. Show them, Lord, that you are God who is real. Lord, take away our past, take away our sin, and grant us this new life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.